Hi guys, welcome to yet another lecture on your JSON class. Now in this lecture, we are going to go over the parsing of a JSON object or how to parse a JSON object so that you can get your object and you can use it in your framework. So in this scenario, we will, uh, you know, explain it in terms of JavaScript, but any JSON object that is returned from a server can easily be converted into a, into an object and then used in the respective framework or language that you are using. So let's get started and see what we have in store. So a common use of JSON is to exchange data to and from a web server, which is very obvious. And that's what, that's the whole purpose of JSON. Now, when receiving data from a web server, the data is always a string. When we parse the data with JSON dot parse, yes, I repeat JSON dot parse. So this is the method that we are going to be using when we parse the data using or basically a string. So whenever you have a JSON dot parse, you know, string here is your JSON object that you will pass. And when you do that, what you will get is you will get a JavaScript object in return. So you will have something like my object is equal to something. So the moment you pass in a JSON or a string out here, which is a valid JSON, you can actually get it to an object. Yes. So let's go ahead and see some examples. So let's create a simple JSON object. So we will create a string. So what we will say is JSON object is equals to let's make it a string so that we know that this is a string and let's say we have name John age 25 city New York okay so now let's run this and when we get the my object console dot log my object so you should get the my object in the console let's run it with js go to console you get an error because json at position zero unexpected token j oh because i haven't passed the json object my bad and it should be json okay json all right, let's clear it. Let's run it and you get your object as an output. So you can very well see what you can expect. Now there is a problem, right? You will also get an error when your JSON is incorrect. Let's say instead I forget to, you know, give the quotes to age. Let's run this and you should see there is an error and it will tell you at position 17. So if you say line 17, it will tell you that age is a problem, but it's not so clear because when you're expecting data from server, which means this, you are this data, it'll be a problem. So there is something called as a JSON lint, uh, just like there is a JS lint where you can validate your J JavaScript or, you know, purify your JavaScript. There's something called as JSON lint where you can just paste your JSON file and you can validate it and it will give you an error saying John age 25 city something string got undefined. So it was expecting a string, but it got undefined. So now let's change this to age in quotes and let's validate it. And you will see the JSON is valid and it'll also tell you how it does. What are the conditions? What are the common errors, common issues, how you can fix them? So anytime you have a JSON file or JSON data that you need to validate, you can go to jsonlin.com. Again, this will be available in your resources section and you can validate your JSON file. Now that being said, let's quickly add the quotes again. Now that was easy because this object came in from your, you know, string that you created. But what if this object comes in from a remote server? Yes. In that scenario, we are going to see a, some, a very simple example on, you know, accessing your data using Ajax or as we say, XML HTTP request. So if you go to W3 schools and just search for it, you know, just go here, let's say, XML HTTP request. The first article that you should pretty much see is either your, dev, uh, you know, MDN or a Mozilla and you will see a W3 school too. So let's just do W3 schools and you should see the first article out here, which is W3 schools. Second, actually you click on this and you should be able to go on to this article. Now here you can see a very good example where you can actually send a request to a particular file name or a URL in this scenario and you will get a data back. So let's go ahead uh, and copy this and let us go ahead and comment our JSON object, not the entire thing, just the variable JSON object and let us paste it here for now. Okay. 
let me move it here nothing will happen nothing should run because the file name doesn't exist you can either have a local file or you can actually give a url now to fulfill that what we will do is we will hop on to another very cool site which is called json placeholder and uh, in the json placeholder file what we will see is you can see a sample request you just run this and you will see a body and user id title and body coming up so what you need to do is copy this url so the url is very simple you just copy this url and do a slash post slash one so let's go here let's paste this url here and of course because that was the root url you need to make sure you're appending the post one let's copy this and you should be able to get something onto the screen so you send this request and you update your document dot demo so whatever was this content out here in the in here this will get updated let me comment my object also at this point as well as the console and you can see the data is already updated out here so this is the json that got returned to us now there is also another cool thing that you can do is you can copy this url if it is returning a json file you can just open your chrome browser and paste it you will see the json file out here it's very simple now you close this and you copy this completely and go to your json lint to make sure that the json that you got from the response is valid or no and again it will lint it and it'll say it's a valid json so you can definitely go ahead and use it now you can see that this json has multiple things user id id title and body to access any of these either you can directly do a you know console log of my object by parsing let's actually do it inside so let this be commented so rather than doing a demo of inner html updating with the H, you know the response text what we can do is copy this response text create a variable variable my object is equals to json dot parse and then paste the same response so now you have it in your object and the way you can access it is you can just do object dot user id i think that's what it was so the answer is one because the value is one let's say you want to do the title so this plus let's give a hyphen in between plus let's give my object dot title okay and you can see the user id and the title got displayed so that was easy right so all you have to do is parse the response text or the string and then you will get your resultant json object and then accessing that json object is very easy and similar to what we have seen in our previous classes now again you can also you know basically access any of it like let's say for example if you go to the same uh, placeholder the website you can see there are posts you can create so if you click on this you will see 100 posts created so this is nothing but an array so you can actually loop through this content so let me show it to you so rather than actually let's comment this out completely and actually let's copy this also So I just copied everything and rather than doing post one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the second option, which is post. So let's just do a post. So this should give me, you know, like 100 rows. And once I get this, I will continue to display the response text. So you can see it in the object two. inner HTML will be this. Let me just comment it out. Well, let's just delete this actually. So this is the response that you got, which is an array of objects that is received from your number of posts that you had in your JSON placeholder file. Now, what you can do is you can actually iterate through this array and it is very easy. So the way you will do it is you will first initialize your JSON object. So variable my object is equals to JSON dot parse and then pass in your response text, which is this one. H except HTTP dot response text so your JSON object is created now you will loop through the JSON object because it's an array and the way you will do it is I in my object and then you will get the my object value now to display that onto your uh, you know screen or the text what you will do is you will have a variable let's say text equals to nothing and then update text plus equal to whatever value the text had so you will update it with 
first is the id as we had previously so you will do a my object user id and let's just display this text onto the screen and it should display you numbers 1 to 100 because my object you need to make sure you have the ith element it's an array and you should you should see 1 1 1 1 2 2 2 2 3 3 4 5 till 100 or 10 as we see so if you see here also it's all user id 1 1 1 1 1 so many times now you can also do an id rather than user id so you should get 1 to 100 let's say so you can get 1 to 100 now you can put it onto a new line very easily So everything displays a little separated so that should be good enough for you to get started once you have the id you can also display the title so let's say i actually have to display it out here so i will say hyphen plus and then another plus and then display the title you can see one something two something three something so again it can go for as much as you want but uh, the point out here is that you can iterate through the my object using a for loop and access everything that you need and display it onto your screen it is as simple as that now that was all about parsing in json if you have any exceptions how do you deal with it well the first exception that you will always have is dates because json doesn't support date object what you will have a problem with let me comment this out so we can see another example so this is commented now let's go on and let's say if you have dates in your json object for example you have something called as variable person let's make it a json by putting it into a string Just trying to create this so let's say 1988 so now this is a birthday that I want to give for the person and the way to access that is very you know it's easy when it comes to JavaScript because all you need to do is first get the object so let's say my object is equal to you will do a JSON dot parse because that's how you will parse any JSON file you will pass the person so you have your object person right now so once you get the object person let's say my object dot birth because that's the key that we used is equals to new date and then again pass the same thing which is my object dot birth let's do a console dot log of my object dot birth let's go to the console run it and it says object date and again if you go here in the console you should see the date printed out which is 13th of December 1988 again that's how you can actually use parse function to receive the string and then convert it to a date object or you can use the second parameter of the JSON parse function called reviver the reviver parameter is a function that checks each property before returning the value. So let me show you an example. So the way you can write a reviver, let's actually give this, uh, you know, a little space so we don't need to do this. So rather than doing this, you know, by explicitly assigning, you can pass a second parameter, which is nothing but a function that accepts the key comma value and then gives you a response or a return. Now what this will do is this will actually give you a chance to update certain data. So let's say if you have the key is double actually triple equal to birth. Okay. In that scenario what you can do is you can go inside and you can do a return a new date and then whatever is the value that you got because the parameter you passed is value value will be returned so what this is doing is nothing but it is the moment you're parsing for every object that it parses it will have a key value pair now for every key it will check if it is equal to birth if the key is equal to birth it will return a new date of the value of that key so in this scenario the moment it sees birth it sees this date of 1988 
as the value and then it will convert it to a date object. If not, you just return the normal value. So you do a return value. So this is the default that happens for any case. So the default reviver, if you, you know, actually assume it to be, it will be a function which takes in a key value pair and always return the value as it is. So you can actually customize your key value pair out here. So you don't have to write it again and again. Now, if you go ahead and clear this and run this, you should still see the data object and in the console, you will see the date. Let's clear the console, run it again. You should see that date out here. Okay. So that was easy. Now, what if you want to parse functions? So first functions are not allowed in JSON. If you need to include a function, you can write it as a string. You can convert it back into a function later. So let me show you an example. So for this, let's say we add an age factor and rather than giving it a, you know, to be a function out here, you can write this function as a string itself in here. So you can do a quote and then you can say function and you can do a return age is 25. Okay. So you do a return 25 and close it. So the way you can actually parse this uh, function is very easy. So let's comment this out. We don't need this console log. Let's go down and let's quickly see how we can do that. So now you have your my object, which is out here, my object and it's passed to the actual JSON object as a person. So now when you have my object, what you can do is my object dot age, because that's the age that you want it to be set it. You can write another function called which is eval. So that's will this will just do an evaluation of the function that you have and you can pass the parameters, which is a string. And then you can do a my object dot h because now you're passing the function, the actual function. And again, you need to make sure that you close the bracket. And when you do this, let's do a console log of the same, you know, object after evaluation. So you can do my object dot age and uh, let's see what we have. Let's clear this and it gives you a function of 25. Now, if you want the value or the return value from that function, you need to make sure you call or invoke that function using the parenthesis and you should get the value of 25. So that's how you can actually, you know, pass a function as a string and evaluate it to becoming a function and use it. However, it is possible. But when you are trying to use a JSON object, you should avoid using functions because the functions will lose their scope and you would have to use evolve to convert them back into the function. Now there are the browsers that support JSON.parse is pretty much everything that you see currently or the modern browsers. But to just give you a list of it, it is, let's say the first one is the Firefox. It anything that is a version 3.5 or above will be supporting JSON for you. Let's say IE, I don't know how many people use it these days, but IE 8 onwards, the JSON support is already there. Chrome, any level should be there. Opera, I think number 10, which is the version 10 and Safari version 4 onwards. So these are the browser versions that actually support parse. So json.parse will be supported in these browsers. If you're using any browser, which is in lower configuration or lower version than this one, you probably will have some difficulty in executing the json.parse. And therefore I will recommend that you make sure that you at least have these versions before you playing with it. So that was all from this lecture. And if you have any questions around json.parse, let me know in the Q and a section or in the comments below, all your resources will be available to you just like, uh, you know, in any other lecture, either in your resources section or in the comments below. And I will see you in the next class.